So simply ask a question. Good morning, Shifu. Good morning, everyone. I would like to ask a question. For people with health issues, is it good for them to chant the Medicine Buddha title? Mm. Um, for people with health issues, huh? yeah. Uh, yes, of course, it's good. Yeah. Uh, Simply, uh, <laughs> yes, so um, so again, um, yes, it is good for people with health issues to chant medicine Buddha's uh, name or title, if you will. Uh, even if you have no health issue, it's also good to chant. Yeah. Um, so, but what does it mean by chanting the Buddha's name? So, for example, if uh, someone chant Namo Yao Si Liu Li Guang Ru Lai, Namo Yao Si Liu Li Guang Ru Lai. Yeah. Uh, on one hand, chant this every day, chant, chant, chant. chant. But then, uh, at home, kill a lot of insects. Then, like to uh, delight in eating meat. Yeah. Uh, like to eat seafood. Yeah. Uh, don't feel anything in seeing animals die for them. Uh, then, is this person chanting Yao Si Ruli Ruli Kong Ru Lai actually? Uh, then we can say, even though this person chant with the mouth, but the heart is not with, not connected with Yao Si Liu Li Guang Ru Lai. Yeah. When we recite the Buddha's name, uh, <clears throat> the name itself uh, uh, points towards his qualities. Yeah. Uh, unlike us normal people. <laughs> Yeah, our name, who gave us our name? Who gave us our name? Our parents give us our name. Yeah. Uh, some names don't really have meaning also. Yeah. Uh, in Singapore and maybe in Malaysia, I don't know. Yeah, I, I heard that, that last time when uh, people are not so educated, they just call their children Atu Akao Anyao uh, and sometimes people call their children's name, or they name their children according to uh, fortune tellers, yeah, according to the strokes. And because they also don't know what the, the meaning, what is the meaning of the name, so they just anyhow choose one name. Perhaps most, most importantly, uh, parents may choose certain names for their meanings based on what they hope their children would embody. So sometimes they call it call their children Laifa. <laughs> Laifa. Yeah. Uh, or uh, you, you notice a lot of uh, a lot of ladies last time called May something, May something. Uh, like May yet. <laughs> Uh, yeah, why? Because we, we, we tend to think, oh, girls should be made, uh, so we call you make something, yeah? Then boys should be strong, so chang something, yeah? Wo chang, uh, ming chang, <laughs> yeah? So, um, even when we call our, our children names uh, according to the qualities that, uh, even when we are given names according to qualities, it is somewhat worldly qualities. Yeah, worldly qualities. And we don't even know whether the children, the parents don't even know whether the children have these qualities. You know, we just name them hoping that they will become like that. Yeah. Uh, when a child is called Laifa, does it mean that the, the, the child will bring wealth 
strength, fortune, not, not necessary. Yeah. So enlightened beings and us are different in this way. Yeah. Especially the bodhisattvas. So their names uh, actually embody the qualities that they have. Yeah. Embody the qualities they have. Yeah. So uh, when we recite Yao Si Liu Li Huang Er Lan Yao Si Fu. Yeah, let me tell you, uh, <laughs> Yao Si Fu. Ah Mi Tuo Fu. Then Ah Mi Tuo. Eh, Ah Mi Tuo. What does it mean? Oh, uh, maybe we don't don't really Amitabha. We don't really know what it means. So Buddha in the Amitabha should try even tell you. Yeah. Uh, it means Wu Liang So Wu Liang Guang. Yeah. But of course. If you don't learn Dhamma, you also don't know what Wu Liang So Wu Liang Guang means. Yeah. And um, but Yao Si Fu should be quite straightforward. Yeah. Uh, when I was doing the Yao Si Fu class, I went to do a bit of, uh, you can say, mini research or study about it. So the word Yao Si, right? Um, in the in the in the Chinese language actually can mean two things. One is physician, it means like Tai Fu, like doctor. Another one is like pharmacist. Yeah, like pharmacist, someone who si yao, yeah. So like master of medicine. But both meaning is similar. So someone who prescribes medicine to people. Yeah. Um, Interestingly, in the Pali Canon, the Buddha also described himself as a doctor, uh, the great doctor. But um, in the Pali Canon, the Buddha described himself uh, as a doctor, as a metaphor. Yeah? That sentient beings are like patients with ailments and uh, sickness is suffering. Yeah? Suffering from all kinds of things. And then the Buddha being a doctor, diagnose it and then prescribe the medicine, which is basically Dhamma. And uh, the, the disciples, yeah, the Sangha is like the nurses who help to administer the medicine, but it's still up to the patients to take the medicine. And in this way, you are cured of the illness, which is suffering. So anyone and everyone should recite Yao Si Fu. Uh, but as I said, if we recite without understanding, then we may think, oh, I just recite this, Yao Si Fu will settle all my health issues. Yeah. But our body, speech, and mind is not in line with Yao Si Fu. It's not in line with the 12 vows of Yao Si Fu. Yeah. Um, if you look at the 12 vows, um, the, there's some part which is we can say worldly, then some part which is uh, otherworldly, yeah, or supra mundane, mundane and supra mundane, meaning sijian chu sijian. The sijian part is uh, the worldly part or mundane part is for those who uh, who are without food, without clothing, uh, without protection, and so on. Uh, Yao si fu will render them food, clothing, protection, and so on. Yeah. For those who, um, who are filled with fear and so on, Yao si fu will render them uh, assistance. And then the supramundane, uh, then Yao si fu with the light, yeah, will shine on them <laughs> and then uh, get them to be liberated. So the light part actually means the Dharma. Like it means wisdom, yeah. But many people read it, read the or uh, chant the Yao Si, Yao Si Fu Hao. Then most people tend to look at it as literally Yao Si Fu shine the light. Yeah, right. Some people even dream of Yao Si Fu shining light on them. Or oh, then after that, hey, the next day they feel better already. Yeah. Maybe you also for really go around with, with uh, I don't know, with the light from the forehead shining all over. Yeah. But if that is the case, then that is still the worldly support. 
the supramandin support would be the light of wisdom. The light of wisdom. It cannot be that the Buddha cultivate for three asankhya kalpa or more, yeah, only to become a doctor, right? In Singapore, doctor just five years there. Eh? Why you need three asankhya kalpa? <laughs> only need five years of medical degree. Eh? So Medicine Buddha cultivated for three asankhya kappa, he attained Buddhahood. Yeah. Not attain uh, medical degree. Yeah. So when we recite Yao Si Fu Hao, uh, we should align ourselves with Yao Si Fu's Si Da Yuan. Yeah. Uh, then in, in that case, in that way, we align body, speech, and mind together with the enlightened ones. Then we slowly move away from the three lower realms. We slowly move away from um, the, the, those actions that lead to pain and suffering. And in this way, then, those causes for health issue will be cut off. Yeah. And in this way, we wouldn't um, experience health issue due to karma. But if we still have actions that lead to health issues, yeah, then it's our problem. <laughs> For example, if you don't lead, live a regular lifestyle, moderate lifestyle, yeah, you like, for example, in Chinese, bao yin, bao shi, you eat without limits, yeah you drink without limits, then of course you're going to fall sick. Uh, if you don't regulate your emotions, you will fall sick also. Yeah. You allow yourself to always give, give rise to anger, uh, your liver will be damaged. You allow yourself to keep on being sad, then yeah, your lungs will be affected. Yeah. Uh, this is Zhong Yi. Uh, Zhong Yi. Yeah, but you can verify yourself. Yeah. I mean, to begin with, you, you don't have to believe this. Uh. To begin with, when you are, when you are, your your mood is normal, versus when you are, your your emotion is very high or low. Which, in which one is your body calmer? Which one? When your emotion is not so agitated, right? Yeah. In fact, scientists have been doing studies and they have observed that. When, when we have um, the strong uh, like emotions, then our body actually um, like fear, anger, a lot of adrenaline and a lot of other things coming up. Yeah. So uh, coming back to the health issues. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't make sense uh, <laughs> if we recite your for and then we still, wow, Delight in eating light seafood, uh, yeah, and then don't practice kindness. So it's a whole package. But most people start off just taking the wrapper, then the, taking the wrapper and then go back home. Wow, so happy I got a wrapper. <laughs> but the real medicine is that like, don't, 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 yeah. So, uh, for people with health issues, is it good for them to chant the Medicine Buddha title? Yes, it is. Uh, but even better if they chant and embody the Medicine Buddha's qualities. Oh, <clears throat> Marcel added uh, a question from Tammy. Is Tammy here? Tammy? Ah, yes. Zawan Sifu, further on Xiao Ye, how can one stop? Creating Ye, then, Shifu, you have mentioned Sen Yu Yi. So, if I am more mindful of my Sen Yu Yi, I can slowly seize it. Seize it, Shifu. <laughs> uh, so, uh, maybe we have to just quickly clarify one thing. Huh? Many times we hear Dhamma talk, and then the, the venerable will say, Aya, zao ye la. then it seems like Ye itself is negative. Ye itself is neutral, it's not negative. It is neither this or that. 
depending on the mental qualities that is uh, that drives the action, yeah, the yi, yi is karma, is action. Uh, depending on the mental qualities that drive it, then you say that the, the karma is wholesome or unwholesome, or neither wholesome nor unwholesome. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So um, the aim in Buddhism is actually not to cease creating karma. Yeah. That is a misnomer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we can say that we, we try to stop creating negative karma, unwholesome karma. Yeah. Oh. Uh, of course, in some of the texts or some of the commentary, then it says that, oh, once you become enlightened, you don't create karma anymore. Right? <laughs> some traditions say that. Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't mean that then you are not doing anything anymore. Yeah, so some of the uh, traditions interpret karma to be um, something that some say, oh, uh, it must be intentional. So you mean after that, enlightened ones do things unintentionally. Buddha accidentally gave teachings for 45 years. <laughs> the Arahants accidentally uh, uh, gave counsel to many people. Yeah. That doesn't mean that all the arahants go on Armstrong accidentally, <laughs> incidentally. Yeah. At the end of the after lunch, then you ask the arahant, uh, wow, so wow, you had your lunch ready? Uh well, I incidentally had lunch. <laughs> huh? Incident? You mean you didn't decide to have lunch? Yeah, no self ready so don't know who decided that. <laughs> so sometimes such statements are to me the way i see it such statements is because we cannot reconcile we, we we cannot understand how people can still act if they don't have they if they realize no self yeah <laughs> so then then the, the conclusion becomes very complicated very very like huh? it doesn't make sense yeah uh, so simply put we are not trying to stop karma because if, if stopping karma means without qualification, uh, then it means stopping all actions. Uh, we first and foremost are trying to stop the unwholesome actions. Not stop unwholesome actions. So, but you are right. If we are more mindful of body, speech, and mind, then we can slowly cease the unwholesome actions. Yeah. Uh, this is the precursor to right effort. Yeah, so you have to first be aware of it. Yeah, first be mindful, first be aware of it. Uh, then you can uh, seize the unwholesome, uh, unwholesomeness. Then body, speech, and mind will cease to be unwholesome. Oh. So, but ultimately, when we are enlightened, then um, the mindfulness, in a way, um, is it becomes what we call wu gong yong. That means effortless mindfulness. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the unwholesome states effortlessly don't arise. Yeah. Because you have cut off the reason for unwholesomeness to arise. Yeah. Because uh, the root defilements have been severed. Uh, greed, hatred, delusion, ignorance. Most importantly, ignorance has been severed. Once ignorance is severed, then unwholesomeness has no basis, no ground to arise anymore. No. But for a start, we need to do this. Yeah. Till we meet again, may be guided and protected by the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. And as always, have a mindful day ahead.
Take care. Stay safe. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.